Yeah, from our perspective, that's what, uh, that's a good one. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen. I'm looking at some of the, uh, this of course is Easter Sunday, that's why the title uh, is, uh, of today's lecture is the greatest to story ever told. And uh, this is, uh, I changed my subject for the day because it's early this morning. Right after Fajr, I laid back down and I turned to, of course, to C-SPAN. Sunday is a C-SPAN radio day because as you go on in the day, like from now on, they're going to repeat all the, the programs that, uh, that, they, uh, that they have on TV and book reviews and all of that stuff is what they have on Sunday on here in D.C. on C-SPAN radio. So before, it was been a custom of mine for many years, before they had uh, uh, phones with Press TV, RT, Turkish television and all that, I would, Sunday, after our program, all up until midnight would be the time I just sit there and wrote and reviewed the stuff that I didn't, you know, because at that time we didn't mess with TV a whole lot, but we would want to uh, review the whole week. And they have Meet the Press, they have Face the Nation, Right, they got all of that. And so, you're not getting an education from watching that. You're just getting how they view everything. That's all we get. We didn't watch it to learn. Although there is some TV programs now, Chinese TV, those lecturers and, and speakers and the interviews are educational. They only have professor of trade and commerce. They have uh, the white man been in China 20 years. Da, 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 da. They have the, the Korean studies professor of Asian studies, you know, and all of that. That's, if you notice, that's what they have on Chinese TV. Even Turkish TV, except Turkish TV is a little too pro-American, a little too anti-Iran. But other than that, you know what I mean, they have, uh, you can, uh, it's like I had a discussion with someone the other day about, uh, well, you weren't at the demonstration, so you can't uh, uh, say they did. I said, well, we know what they are. We have people who go to the demonstration. Plus, we've already forecast what they're going to do. We've been doing this a long time. We don't have to go down there and sit there anymore and use up our time being at, at the demonstration, trying to explain to the people that the demonstration is made up. The children don't have enough wherewithal to organize all of those people. Well, the Oprah help, this guy I said, those people are operatives for the system. That's what I mean is the kids don't have all, they, they got a whole list of collaborators. When they say, Miss Saul, sorry, you go over there and get the women out. Right? She don't call up everybody. The system goes into, and they hook everybody up. You see what I mean? Pretty soon. You got a million people downtown, half a million people. That's the same thing they did with with uh, with answer. See, answer started going over to Iraq back in the eight and it could have been early. It was the early and mid nineties. And they were doing good programs on, with uh, Ramsey Clark. Now, I don't care what they say. If the Attorney General, ex-Attorney General, 
the ex Gestapo leader is leading the program. Of the, this, the Gestapo was leading the program, but they was doing programs on depleted uranium. And Saddam was saying that's to give them credibility. Now as time go on, uh, what's the name? Ramsey Clark eases out of the picture. You got Brian Becker, you got his brother, you got remember Mr. Fan and all of them people. They make their own experts. Then after they make their experts, when you want to talk about Iraq, like I told them here, when we met downstairs once. I said, if y'all want to get down with the real Iraqi people, I'll, uh, you know. But they got their stooges in Iraq. And I'm telling them, I'll put you, hook you up with these folks, you know what I mean? Uh, Siri and all of that. Uh, they don't want that. Then the next thing you see is they are their media people is everywhere. Example, we had a program down at the uh, press building. It was a good program. You know what one of the, the, the Negro, uh, you hear on WPFW now, is old time. When we went to Sudan together, he said, yeah. You mentioned W.L. Nolan. He said, when I was the editor of such and such a newspaper, that was my first case in California. Mm -hmm. And he was applauding me for being probably the most informed person that he had run across. Because mm -hmm. I take him back to 1968. So I was telling Hadari, I said, he yeah, asked, Big time brother here. And the brother, we sat all the time in Sudan, we talked about an old group that we was associated with, all the ministers, all. It was really a good live conversation because we knew who we was talking about and nobody else. Yeah. Not to mention that I called him. Well, I had to tell I him had, about you, left the number and everything, and never got a call back. That's right. That's because that's his job. That's his job. His job is, the point is, you remember our little lawyer friend rolled through here? And you remember the, 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 the. So people listen to WPFW and they might think, that's a guy. When we read this, you will understand. We will. Understand. We've been knowing that boss man ain't gonna have no programs that can feed the people the truth without him jumping in there and him feeding the people. So you see, uh, the people that come through here, the rolls ease over the WPFW. Pretty soon, they got a press pass to the White House. They got everybody that come here that, that, that they, from RT, they send them. They already plugged in. That's why you can say, oh, uh, they just hit me with RT too regular. They just cut it. Get too much play. And the attitude, they can't, uh, Cuban uh, Harris, they can't stand a, a black person with character, ethics, uh, ain't scared of it. Who are you talking to? You don't know that. Ain't independent. Oh, they can't stand it. So, without going all around, but I have a few newspapers here, a few headlines. Uh, keeping the faith. This is about uh, we forgot what Dr. King believed in. Da -da -da -da. Of course, this is by Michael Eric Dyson, a professor of sociology at Georgetown, ordained Baptist minister and contributing opinion writer. Nice guy, I like him. But
thing I was listening to today, uh, Kathleen Cleaver was on and Dr. So-and-so was on C-SPAN early this morning. And Dr. So-and-so uh, knows more about, from his research and from what the police probably gave him, more about the thing almost than Kathleen do. Because mm. he can recite dates and facts, you know, better than she can. But she's done a very good job. But, so these are, and you know, sometimes I wasn't wondering, why are you still here? And you're supposed to be gone. And then this morning I realized, you know, that the lot keep you where you need to be till it's time for you to go. Where do we go from here? This is our time, of course. Where do we go from here? Same question we always put forth. Has it been 50 years? 50 years, you know, like, okay. To tell you the truth, we may think about 50 years ago different than other people. Now, I think about my kid that was born in 97 and 2001. Good God Almighty. Two. Stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> you know, my youngest daughter asked me one time, there was some historical program, and I talked about it. So, yeah, we had those, those cotton wagons. So, you know everything, and we went over to uh, Frederick Douglass's place one time, and I saw all the stuff in there. I said, "Yeah, those are the buckets. This is the kind of buckets that we use." Da, 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 da. And uh, except that button is uh, uh, wooden, and I would take them to the park over here with a pail to pick berries. I was in the country. That's where you got. You had a pail. Just like on a little house of the prairie. And when I'm talking, I'm talking about, yeah, oh, we, uh, the, oh, this is the western city of that pump. We had that same kind of pump. So they asked me on several occasions, were you alive during slavery? Because they don't have a good, no, they don't have a good timeline. Because when they in school, I'll ask them, where you at right now? Oh, we're at the such and such a time. I said, oh, okay, uh, that's, that's when uh, Chief Joseph then made his great discussion to why again, yeah, that's what I said, uh, the labor movement. And uh, so, uh, they had something, they was, they had a debate, and they got all behind. So I was saying, okay, you're dealing with Latin America and the attitudes. I said, just type up uh, the good neighbor policy. Now Franklin Roosevelt, and the good neighbor policy says what it was. And I said, think, okay, you can use that. Well, what about that? I said, type in La Matanza. So she typed in La Matanza. Uh, you mean Argentina, 19? I said, no, 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 no. That's Argentina, 76 and 70s. Night, type 1932, Salvador, you know, coffee growers. La Matanza, the slaughter, the murder. Uh, you know, Mata to kill, like Mata Morris, kill the Muslims, is what it means. Mata Morris, kill the Moors. But what it mean? Can you imagine we name a town and kill the white folks, California? Hmm. That would be a neighbor city. How are you going to name a town or even kill the niggas? You know, or slaughter the Mexicans, uh, Alabama. Right? It would be people say these people are crazy. But if it's us, they can do anything they want. Anyway. The subject is this. 
We live in a very unique and particular time right now. Okay. What's going on with all of this stuff is, uh, you you had got this right, this a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Just a whole centerfold, a whole D.C. This is D.C., but it could have been anywhere. It could have been Oakland, could have been Detroit. 68 was a big year. 68 is like now. You got to remember, all this talk about where do we go from here? How did we get there? How would they be talking about where do we go from here? Also, how would we be getting to this thing right here? Uh, this was yesterday. This is Saturday, the 31st. You know the guy that did all the uh, the studies on the football people that was getting run crazy. Yeah, concussion. Well, yeah, he's out there in Modesto, not Modesto or right next to Modesto. He's the one did autopsy. Fresno, he's there in Fresno. He's the one did autopsy on him. Yeah, he did, look at, he did a good job too. The brother was hit maybe eight times out of 20 shots. He said each one of them was deadly, each one of them except the one in the leg. And the one in the leg, he was hit while he was going down. You know, he was already... Uh, and, yeah. and he said they were, they, the boy was not facing the police. Of course not. They, they, shot in the back. They got it all right here. This is just shot in the back. Mm -hmm. This is... Uh, 2018. 50 years this stuff has been front page news. And it's worse now than it was then. We've had a black president. I don't even know how many Negro congressmen we got. We didn't have big city mayors. And we still have quite a few mayors across the country. State senators all over the United States. Congressman up to Gazula. And what and the people are still talking about. We have to vote in a good guy. If you got a president, if you got a few senators running around, you got tons of Congress people. If you didn't have governors and just tons of mayors up to today, city councilmen, head of the Board of Education, all over America. And it's worse now than it was then. So getting back real quick on uh, right. the shooting of the guy. Right. Now, you know, we grew up, we used to watch Westerns. Yeah. What would they call a person that shot a man in the back that was unarmed? A coward. Oh. Huh? A coward. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. But you don't hear that, you don't hear that language anymore that somebody shoot somebody in the back eight times and no coward. That's a coward. He had a dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard. In other words, you remember, no, Jesse James' real name was, what was Bob Howard? One of them guys that shot Jesse James. That's what I'm saying. A guy with two first names always get in the back in Westerns, you know. But the dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard, that shot Jesse James, yeah, shot him in the back, you know. Uh, can you imagine, the people don't imagine, they forget the power that they hand a dumb high school graduate, barely graduate, or two years of junior college police officer. 
he has the badge, the gun, the environment give him the right to kill. This is a drug neighborhood, high crime. Therefore, this is back 40 years ago. Therefore, we have a right to search cars and there may be weapons around. So there's no such thing as illegal search and seizure in the black community. This is not new. They've been, now you can beat the case if you kind of wealthy Negro, you know, if they, but you can't beat it just you got a public defender and you just call you innocent. The point is, we have technically way less freedom. Not black people, but Americans. All the sci-fi stuff, all the telephone, they snatching everything, you know, the right to privacy. You don't hardly hear that anymore. But it's not constitutional. Well, if you read all of what it says, it gives you the exclusive <coughs> right. And they throw out, like the stuff Imam Jamil, uh, Havis Corpus, why do you have the body? That was a great thing, because we can always, we have exhausted every room, every remedy to get out of prison. And then you file a writ of Habeas Corpus. Why do you have the body? And they have to prove why we have the body in jail. That's what habeas corpus means. Why or do you have the body? You don't want to hear about habeas corpus. Illegal searches and seizures. Every, we're going to get to what they did to the people. We're going to show what they did, and when by you finish, you'll see what they did with this. Why all the Negroes? Who is everybody? So, let's start off with just a simple handout that we always hand it out. It's called, this is a COINTEL program. Let's start with uh, we'll start in, in the order of this is August 28, 1956. Communist Party USA Counterintelligence Program Internal Security. This is a memorandum of the United States government. During its investigation of the Communist uh, Party USA, the Bureau has sought to capitalize on incidents involving the party and its leaders in order to foster factionalism, bring the